Liz Crosby here with another yoga flow. We're going to go over how to press into handstand and also what comes along with the masculine generation creation is also the feminine aspect. So as you build strength, you also create heat as a byproduct, tapas, heat for purification. You'll want to use that heat right away before it burns off to create the feminine aspect. Otherwise, you could create an imbalance in heart chakra, which we don't want. So for props today, blanket. If you, I know, some of you are like, oh, God. Uh, we, we've got to go over the movements in planes that are familiar first. So we'll be doing just a little bit, a little bit of sliding today. And if you don't have a blanket, socks. If you have a rug floor, then of course, plastic plates. And if you don't have a Dharma wheel, I still have stuff for you. You can use the wall. We're going to use the wall today, by the way. Um, another good reason to use socks if you don't want to smudge up your wall if you have dirty feet. And if you don't have a Dharma wheel, you can still use something like a chair or a couch, something that's not going to move. And I'll get into the specifics as to why this is important as we go along. So uh, without further ado, lie down onto your backs. This is probably the easiest orientation to work these movements in, is right down on the back. This is still pretty hard though. So we're going to generate quite a bit of heat today, yogis. Just FYI, hug yourself up into a tight little ball. Give yourself a nice big squeeze. Okay, so again, these are the movements that we're hoping to replicate as we move into uh, different orientations with respect to gravity and space. So we'll start with a Vakasana Crow Pose. Now from here, left leg extends out like you're going into Ekapata Bach. And then hug that left knee back in, right leg extends out, just alternating. So kind of like a mountain climber, if you will, and we will get to mountain climbers, so that's what we're prepping for. Now, I want you to try alternate knees. So, extending both legs out, opposite knee comes across. Opposite knee comes across. You can extend the arm so it replicates pressing the handstand if you'd like. I'm keeping the palms flat, flexion of the wrists, so it replicates, emulates weight bearing. Whew. Amazing, all right, hug those knees in. Already feeling a little bit of a burn right away, reciprocating with some feminine. Soul speed to the mat, hips distance. Press up, lift up, roll spine up. Hands come behind the back, interlace. Draw shoulder blades together and press your chest towards your chin. Breathe into the back of the neck. Beautiful, gently release. Extend the arms straight up, protract shoulder blades, lift heels up, and slowly lower down. Hug those knees back in. Not done with the bent leg variations, extend the arms straight up. Pretend like you're in crow pose, inhale to extend the arms and the legs. So it's like you're pressing into handstand from crow. Exhale, draw in. Inhale to extend. Exhale, draw in. Inhale to extend. Now side crow, knees to the right, hands to the left. Inhale to extend. Exhale, knees to the left, hands to the right, alternating. Inhale to extend. Exhale, switch. Inhale to extend. Exhale, switch. We extend and hug your knees and give yourself a nice warm embrace again. Rock it gently from side to side. All right, now moving into the straight leg variations. So obviously it gets harder when the leg goes straight. Do what you can. Extending the legs out again. Now replicating a standing split press in the handstand. Right leg comes to right wrist. Inhale to extend. Left leg to left wrist. So it's like your toe tapping. Inhale to extend. Now, right leg comes out wide. More of a straddle. Inhale to extend, handstand. Left leg comes out wide. So the left tricep, inhale to extend, handstand. Now come across. Right leg comes across the left tricep. Inhale to extend, handstand. Left leg comes across to the right tricep. Inhale to extend, handstand. Legs come wide, reach your arms through. So it's like a straddle press. Inhale to extend, handstand. Now both legs stay straight, reach up, toe tap both wrists, inhale to extend, handstand, and hug those knees back in. Whew. Feeling the heat, hopefully. That is, that's a burner for sure. So 
Again, we get to do this again in all the orientations. That was just to imprint, get excited, start to take some rocks forward and back. You can keep the knees tucked in or extend the arms and the legs. Extra credit for the expert alchemist that really loves a profound amount of tapas to work with. You can flatten it out, more of a hollow body rock. Oh dang, wow, lots of fire. Whoo, okay. Rock it up, cross shins, plant palms, tabletop. Inhale, melt heart, forward and up, sit on reach your knees up. And exhale around the spine. Take some cat cows. When you're ready, bear pose. Hip circles, shoulder circles. Move that heat around again. There's a feminine aspect reciprocating to balance. All right. Walk the knees back, walk the hands forward, melt the heart down towards the mat, and we extend the circles up towards the ceiling. This should feel really good right about now. Puppy dog pose. And we're going to continuously balance as we move along, as we create heat. We'll progressively get deeper into the heart space and the feminine aspect. Amazing. Delicious. All right. Roll it forward into your sphinx, hips to mat, pressing down the forearms, broaden across the collarbones. Drop right ear towards right shoulder. Left chin with your chest, left your left shoulder. Moving side to side. Back through the center. Extend the arms forward, palms facing towards one another. Lift everything up. And pretend like you're in handstand. So shooting energy out through the hands, out through the feet. You can even flatten the palms again, find that flexion, gaze between the thumbs. Maybe you can squeeze the legs together. And for five, four, the four is a straight line. Three, two, one, cactus the arms, press down the fingertips, lift your chest up. Drop the right shoulder, gaze over your left. Inhale through center, exhale to twist. Moving from side to side. Open up the chest cavity to receive breath. Back through the center as you inhale. And exhale to gently release the spine back down. Hands come behind the back, interlace, massage sacrum with your knuckles just because it feels amazing every time. Now reach the hands back behind. Float it up, locust pose. Shalavasana. Keep the engagement in the back of the core, release the interlace. Hands slide underneath the shoulders, press up, lift up. Cobra pose. Wrap the elbows in towards your side bodies, pop the chest. And then slowly lower the spine back down to the ground. Slide the arms forward back into your sphinx. Tuck the toes. Press down through big toe mounds. Lift the hips in line with your shoulders coming into your forearm plank. And take some seesaws forward and back. Massaging the vertebral column. And then rise the hips up and back. Dolphin pose. From your dolphin. Straighten through both the arms, lift the elbows up off of the mat, coming into downward facing dog pose. Whew. All right, walk it out, bending one knee and then the other, allow the hips to shift side to side, breathing into the calves, the hamstrings, and the lower back. And walk the hands back to the back of the mat, allow for a liberal bend in the knees when you get there. Grab opposite elbows. Shake the head yes, shake the head no, releasing your cervical spine. Release the right hand down, bend the right knee, sweep your left arm up and twist the spine open. Gaze this at the left fingertips. And switch, left hand plants, bend left knee, sweep right arm up, twist the spine open. Gaze at the right fingertips. Gently release both hands to mat. Inhale as you peel the chest forward, find the arch. Lift up onto your fingertips and walk it back out with your gecko hands. And then flatten the palms. Lift the heels, tiptoe the feet to the front of the mat. Arriving in a forward fold at the front of the mat. I'm just going to open up the legs a little bit before we get flowing. Inhale, peel chest forward, finally. 
Exhale, step the left foot back. Left knee lowers, untuck toes. Sweep arms up, low crescent pose. Expand across the heart center. Exhale, hands can go to the mat. Straighten through your right leg. Come on to heel of the right foot. Reach the toes back towards your face. You can tilt the foot from side to side. Now tilt the foot to the right. Walk the hands to the right. Breathe into the outer hip. IT bend. So we want to have a certain amount of range of motion so that we can do these exercises back in the center. Keep your head going in the hip socket. Walk the hands to the left. Left foot points back behind. Left shin perpendicular to the length of your mat. Now walk the hands forward for a puppy dog variation. Breathe into the inner right thigh. Beautiful, and then walking it back towards the middle. Readjust back into your Ardha Hainan, half splits. Tuck the left toes, slide the hips back. Vajrasana, broken toe pose. Opening up the arches of the feet. And our feet aren't the foundation in a lot of these exercises that we're going to work into. But nonetheless, we still want to be able to feel them in space. So enhancing the proprioception. Now, rebending your right knee. Tuck left toes, if not tucked already, lift the left knee up, left hand plants, instep of the right foot, right arm sweeps up, open heart crescent. Gives at the right fingertips. Rotate onto the outer edges of both your feet and let the left hip dip, right hand to right knee, ease into the outer hip stretch. Lift up on the left shoulder to intensify. Say hello to the IT band. both hands to the instep of the right foot. Come on to the heel of the left foot. And then walk the hands over to the left foot. Frame left with your hands. The right heel lifts. Right knee lowers. Untuck toes. Sweep the arms up for your low crescent pose. Both arms extend. Exhale the hands come down to the mat. Straight your left leg half splits. Inhale as you find it, exhale forward fold, breathe into the left hamstrings. And you'll see why all this range of motion is, is important in just a second. Tilt the foot to the left, walk the hands to the left, breathe into the IT band. Outer hip here. Beautiful, back through the center and to the right. Right foot swings back, left foot swings down. Walk the hands forward, wide-legged puppy dog. The half middle, breathe into your inner left thigh, and then lift it back up again. Walk the hands back over to the left, tuck the back toes and slide your hips back on top of your right heel for Vajrasana broken toe pose. Inhale as you find like excellent forward fold. I equate the Seiko chakra to like a saucer, right? And we kind of, in order to get our UFOs up and running again, we need to clear each of these saucers to make it easier to ascend into the uppermost saucers. And then rebending your left knee. Tuck right toes if not tucked already. Lift the right knee up, right hand plants, and step left foot, left arm sweeps up, open heart crescent. Gazes at the left fingertips. Rotate onto the outer edges of both your feet. Let the right hip dip, left hand to left knee. Variation of Vashi. Maybe left arm extends back. So glorious. Both hands to the instep of the left foot. Come onto the heel of the right foot back into your stand. And then walk the hands over to the right foot. Walk it back and forth from side to side. Now be very cautious here. If the pelvic floor muscles are not ready for you to lift the hands up, then please. Feel free to keep the hands on the floor. But those of you that are ready for it, maybe float the arms up and drift from side to side. When you're ready, walk the hands back over to the right foot. Frame right foot with your hands, step right foot back, downward facing dog pose. Now walk the hands back to the feet, arriving in a forward fold at the back of the mat. Inhale as you peel the chest forward, find my arch. Exhale, forward fold. Ground down, lift up, both arms sweep up. Uttita asana, tadasana. Both arms extended in mountain pose. Exhale, the hands back in heart center. 
Now take a step back off of your yoga mat. Pick up the back of the yoga mat, roll it up a couple times. This is where the blanket comes in. And of course, if you don't have a blanket, socks. If you're on a carpeted floor, plastic plates. It's worth it. I say this all the time. The Cirque du Soleil performers have special air hockey tables for a reason. Not all of us have that type of equipment on hand, so we make do with what we've got. Stepping onto the blanket behind the yoga mat. Inhale as you sweep the hands out and up. Exhale, hinge from hips, leave the heart. Inhale as you peel the chest forward, find length arch. Plant down through your palms and slide the blanket back. All right, so both knees will come high up in towards the armpits if you're going into crow. Slide it back, plank. Both knees over the right, tricep side throw. Slide it back, plank. Both knees over the left, tricep side throw. Slide it back, plank. Let's do one more round. Crow pose, exhale. Slide back, plank, inhale. Side crow, exhale. Slide back, plank, inhale. Side crow on the other side, exhale. Slide back, plank, exhale, lower through Chaturanga. The elbows in, foot one foot at a time, inhale to your Urdhva Mukha. Roll those shoulders back, puff the chest, and then slide the blanket up behind the wrists. Whew, inhale, peel chest forward, find length, Ardha. Exhale, Uttanasana. Right leg lift up, Urdhva Hastasana, both arms extended. Exhale, the hands back from the center. Whew. All right, so you want a certain amount of space for this next one. If you don't have space, then just repeat what we just did. Inhale, sweep the hands out and up. Exhale, hinge from your sleeve with heart. Inhale, peel chest forward, find length. Plant down through palms, slide back, plank. All right, here we go. Right foot stays on the blanket. Left foot steps onto the wood floor. Slide the right leg straight over to the right tricep. Nice. And then slide right leg back. Right leg comes across, left leg over to your left tricep. Enjoy the odd hip stretch. It's quite cool like this. And slide the right foot back. Right foot off, left foot on, left leg over to your left tricep. Replicating Ekapada Kundinyasana, one of the arm balances. Slide, left leg back. In the other EPK, left leg comes across to the right tricep. And enjoy the outer hip stretch. It is quite delicious, delectable. Slide, left leg back. Not quite done yet, both feet on the blanket. Now, slide both feet over to your right wrist. So replicating, landing a handstand into Dwaypada. Now slide the blanket back. Both feet over to the left wrist. Keep the legs straight. Whoo! Slide blanket back. Plank. Exhale to lower through chakaranga. Hug the elbows in. Flip one foot at a time. Inhale to your urdhva mukha. Roll the shoulders back. And exhale. Slide the blanket up behind the wrists. Whoo! Inhale, peel chest forward. Find leg. It burns. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, sweep them out and up. Reverse swan dive. And exhale, back through heart center. Release. All right, I'm definitely feeling heated. I don't know about you guys. Blanket can come off to the side. Roll the mat back out. And we are going to make our way to the wall space right away. So, readjust. And I wanted to show you how you can use a chair in place of a Dharma yoga wheel, first and foremost, just in case you don't have a Dharma yoga wheel. This is not necessarily ideal, but you can make it work. So I'm just gonna quickly show you how to use the chair, and then I'm gonna revert back to the Dharma yoga wheel because that is actually a more conducive environment to do the things that we're going to do. But nonetheless, you can use a chair, and the main reason and even doing this, Dharma Yoga Wheel or chair, is we're removing ourselves away from the wall a certain degree so that the hips can come beyond the shoulders. More often than not, when people learn how to do press, when they bring their head directly to the wall, the wall makes it 
completely impossible to bring the hips beyond the shoulders. And therefore you can't use the hips as a leverage weight system to ascend the legs up into your inversion. So what does that translate to? Overexertion of arm muscles, which can actually clamp your heart chakra shut. Again, you don't want that. This is the intermediary that allows us to connect to the socket guna so we can process karmic debris. If you clamp off number four, you're not gonna get any of that third eye activation. So really, really crucial. Yes, you still want to be able to plunge. I'm not saying that plunge is a bad thing, but if that's all that you're doing to ascend into your inversions, and you, uh, usually you know, people that do that don't do hollow back and they don't do scorpion because those muscles are, don't know how to release, don't know how to disengage. So anyways, I, uh, I digress. Head will come to the wheel. I like with, especially a chair that's high, back of the head to the wheel. And it's kind of like a training wheel. So the further back you bring your hands, the more weight you're going to dump into your head. And so the actual setup is helping you get there more than your own central core strength. And again, you can also bring your feet to uh, blocks if you got them, or if you got multiple chairs, bring your feet onto chairs. But it should look like this eventually if you're using the chair. See how I can bring my hips back behind my shoulders? Crucial, crucial. This is our central highway. So if this highway is shut down, we have no connection to crown. So all the work you're doing is just getting blocks off at the top. So really quick reminder, we I did a wall episode earlier last week, so you can go and review that if you want. But just really quickly, if you don't have a chair, which I don't know why you would have a chair, and you only have the wall, then I'm going to give you some wall exercises that you can do without chair or dark on wheel. And I want us to also quickly get hips over shoulders. Video yourself, put up a mirror, Ask your roommate, make sure those hips are stacking. Because if the hips aren't stacking, again, you may be building strength in the wrong places. And we don't want that. We want that Kundalini energy to go all the way up. Because if it doesn't go all the way up, it's poisonous, right? Snakes are venomous. So hands can come to mat about shoulder distance apart, legs distance away from the wall. Middle fingers in line, thumbs in line, arms straight, spiral the eyes, heels towards each other. Walk the feet up the wall into an L shape, maybe one leg extends. So quick review, you can draw that knee in, extend it back up. Draw the knee in, extend it back up, get both sides. So this is the easier version, like I said, bent knee is a little bit easier, so if the signal is faint, as you're first learning how to navigate in this space, work bent knee variation, but eventually you can take it straight leg. More of a standing split press here. And then out to the side, we're in the straddle. Get both sides. Straight leg variation. Again, push the floor away. Evenly distribute weight through the hands. Pressing firmly through the index finger and thumb knuckles. And maybe out to the side. And one more. Oh, that's good. All right, and then release. Feet back to ground, take the quick Uttanasana. You can grab opposite elbows and let yourself hang. Maybe even bring your hips to the wall and just chill. It really does start to resemble reconstructing a temple. So again, be patient with yourself. All right, now the good stuff. This is so clutch, and I wish I had been introduced to me a lot sooner in my practice. Very important if you don't have the arm strength yet to walk a short distance on your hands, then just watch. If you feel uncomfortable at all, have a roommate stand behind you so that you don't fall over. Because this is this is diving into the void, right? I like to joke, this is Sparta going down this deep chasm, the abyss of nothingness. It's not that scary. It's really fun. All right, so do it facing the wall first. So you know, it's so trippy how like, do, 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 toes and nose this way, so easy. Now we do it, flip it, reverse it, 
other way, because our energy channels, they flow energy both ways. Walk it in. I was noticing toes and nose. Bring the toes to the wall, nose to the wall, hold. Find that straight line. Oh, it's so fun. Couple more deep breaths here. Imprinting our central highway, our shishuna, the central axis in space. And then when you're ready, you can either walk it back out or cartwheel out to the side, but be aware of hard objects, animate beings.
we're reversing the energy flow. It's been largely going in one direction for a really long time. Not just for your own vessel, but for the collective, right? Standing and sitting upright culture, I like to joke. All right, slowly lower it back down again, take a little break. Now, if you're new to all this weight bearing, the wrist might start to talk to you. Grab one wrist and rev up the motorcycle, turn the feet. And switch. Good stuff, huh? Now, I'm going to show the wall exercise first. Now, Miguel Hand Balance and Andre Bondarenko both teach this, so it's got to be effective. I was taught to practice hopping up into my donkey kicks, or I prefer the term tuck jump because it sounds more controlled, uh, facing the wall um, this way. But you can actually face the center of the room, go up, and very similar to toes and nose, give yourself a little bit more space, lower the legs down, and lift them back up again. So I'll demonstrate both. If the wrists are starting to talk to you, feel free to just watch, honor your body, ahimsa. So, and this was really highly effective. One of my teachers told me, just do 10 of these, 10 of these a day, and you will have your tuck jump. So, a little hop takes you up, find the wall. And you can always extend up, lower, back down again, hop up. Wall's there if you need it. Extend, lower, back down. All right, so now we do it basically from our toes and nose variation. Give yourself a little bit more distance. So before the heels of the hands were about a foot's distance away from the wall, you'll want to a lot for the distance that you'll need to come into a tuck. So give yourself the uh, allotted distance so that you feel comfortable with this variation. Walk it up. Walk it in. I'm thinking about right there. Looks good. Slowly lower. This is a good one to have socks on too. Into your tuck. And then press it back up again. Lower. And lift. Woo! Lower. It's fun. And lift. And I'll demonstrate the cartwheel out too. Leg comes out wide, cartwheel out. That's a good one to have for yourself. <laughs> kind of embarrassing, but I used to always flip over into a back bend, and it was kind of obnoxiously loud, and, and it made quite a clatter in the class and drew a lot of attention, unwanted attention. So, cartwheel out to the side, who would have thunk? That's a great alternative. So, and your lower back will appreciate it. So we did puppy dog. Now let's work the inverse of that. The kind of the upside down Mexican handstand, right? <laughs> so give yourself a little bit of distance, about arms distance away from wall. Now both hands come to the wall. You can kind of bend the knees, take a wide legged chair pose to activate the large muscle groups of the legs. Then press up straight through the legs, reach back. Both hands connect to wall. Oh, it's so glorious. You can work Chinla, Jalandara Banda, or let the head hang back. Rise it back up again. Whoo! Heart chakra is a whole new ball of wax. I love sacral chakra. It's so fun to open up hip openers. Heart openers, energy just starts blasting through the roof. I mean, it pairs so well. I think a lot of times people will go into big back bends without excavating their press. And, and as you can see, hopefully you feel this sense of security in your lower back as we do the back bends to pair with the press work. Now roll out the hands a little bit because we're going back on them. Gotta do those straight leg variations. So if this is too much for you, if the bent knee was enough, then feel free to just watch. This is definitely something you've got to build up to, right? It doesn't happen overnight, and maybe you're just getting exposed to this stuff 
first and foremost. It's all good, right? Exposure, visualization, that's the first step. So taking it up into our handstand again with the Dharma wheel, head to wheel. Press it up, lift it up. Let's work the straight leg variations. Oh, wait, before that, bent knees so that we can replicate the crow pose. Lower it down as low as you can. And then press it back up again. If you want to, you can go into side crow here. So what I love about the Dharma wheel, you have a lot more freedom. Press it back up again, over to the other side. Press it back up again. Now the straight leg stuff. Right leg, toe taps, right wrist. Press it back up. It's okay if it doesn't reach. Just go as low as you can. Lower, tap. Back up again, maybe out to the side. Lower, tap, back up again, and to the other side. Lower, tap, back up again. Cross, right leg comes across to the left wrist, back up again. Left leg comes across to the right wrist, back up again. Woo both legs come out wide, straddle, toe tap both wrists, back up again. Now legs together, lower it down, can your feet touch the ground? Back up again. Now, Dway Pada, both legs stay straight, both feet touch right wrist. Eww. Back up again. Both legs stay straight, both feet touch left wrist. And back up again. Release it back down. Whew. Fun stuff. Now can you see how those Instagram influencers got their press? This stuff is amazing. So you may just lower your feet to a certain Height may not actually touch the wrist just yet. It's okay. Work with what you got. All right, solar plexus, it comes in nice and slow. Patience, practice, and non attachment absolutely crucial with this. All right, I'm gonna do a little bit more back bending because we've definitely created some heat. Can you feel the furnace that this creates in the upper half? Indispensable, right? It's quintessential. You think that you can just pull the energy up by rooting and rebounding down through your feet and pulling it back up into your heart space? It, it's just, it doesn't follow logically, right? You make your upper half the foundation, it gets a double dose of heat as the fire goes through the upper half, roots and rebounds back up again through the upper half. You get the double dose of heat, tapas, and you're gonna be able to evenly distribute the fire element from solar plexus throughout the mind-body matrix. So, have a more well-balanced, well-rounded practice. Coming forward into tabletop pose. Fingers point towards each other, palms facing up. Now bend in the elbows, all the hands in the fists and straighten the arms, breathe into your wrists. You can do that a couple times. Bend and straighten. Bend and straighten. Now gently release, fingertips point towards your knees and knee your way back. And more often than not, I usually teach this at the beginning of the flow, but it's so nice when you've been heating the wrists up with all this work and all these exercises. So we peel the heels of the hands up off of the mat. Fingertips to lift, very relaxed. All right, so now I'm coming down to lie on your back. We're going to make our way into Urkha Dhammarasana facing the wall so that you can potentially walk the hands up into standing. So we've already done puppy dog against the wall, and we've done a, a, a reverse Mexican handstand, and it must have been quite a hand balancer from Mexico, because it's a really phenomenal shape, and we might actually explore that in a little bit too with Chakrasana. But when you're ready, lie it down onto your backs, and Couple bridge dips just to activate the hamstrings and the glutes. Pressing down from the balls of the feet, roll the spine up into bridge and lower. Lift and lower. Find those glutes squeezing. Hamstrings, lower abdominals engaging. And then when you're ready, press up, stay lifted. Hands alongside the ears, wrap the elbows in. Press up onto the crown of the head first and pause. Walk the hands in, wrap the elbows in, redirect the shoulder blades together and down the back. Now press up, lift up the rest of the way up. Full Urdhva Dhanurasana. Maybe walking in a little bit. 
can you get your chest to the wall? It's, if not, it's okay if not. Then walk the hands off the wall. Send a pulse of energy through the hands. Come up to stand. Whew. Amazing. Again, perfect pairing. Working our core, our inverted core, and establishing our press. And then working into the bend, balancing the masculine and the feminine right here in heart chakra. All right, back down again. And that's so crucial as you do this work in your quest for your press, keep the feminine aspect open because you will block your heart chakra off. It happens. People get so obsessed with certain transitions and postures that it can work to their detriment. So we want to be intelligent about the way we excavate our microcosms. Both hands, reach back, same time. We've already done this once, but now we're gonna take it all the way down. Hips come forward, reach the hands back, and walk it down, all the way to the ground. Gently release, tuck the chin, back then to the mat first. And windshield wiper, the knees. Release your lower back. Well done, yogis. Whew. All right. Hug your knees into your chest and rock it gently from side to side, massaging the back body slightly. I'll take some rocks forward and back, rock up for the seated. So I wanted to show another variation that you can work with the Dharma wheel that I wish I had been introduced to sooner. But before we work it with the Dharma wheel, we're going to do something that is resemblant against the wall. So the wrists have probably had it by now if they haven't already tapped out. Luckily, we're going to take it onto our forearms. And the Dharma wheel is going to help us to work hollow back, forearm balance. So hollow back against the wall first and foremost. Interlace the fingers, knuckles right up to the floorboard, press down to the outer elbows, tuck the toes, walk the feet in, coming into your dolphin pose. Walk it in, walk it in, walk it in, one leg extends up, you won't have to hop quite as intensely. So a little hop takes you up just fine. Find the wall, now let the hips dip towards the wall and pulse the heart space forward. Delicious. A couple more deep breaths here. And then press off of the wall. Release it back down. All right, so one of the ways that you can start working that off of the wall is, of course, backing it away from the wall. And you can, if you want to, release the interlace. Hands plant. One leg extends up. Let's do the other leg this time. Hop it up. Find the wall. One leg descends down. Maybe catch the foot. Switch. Opposite leg descends down. Maybe catch the foot. You can also maybe work your hollow back here. Sliding foot down. Stack. All legs together. Tuck. Delicious and slowly release. All right. So here is the other variation with the Dharma wheel. I'm going to do it facing the middle of the room, so I have plenty of space. And I'm going to show you a couple things to work the Dharma wheel here. You can work your pincha press, so form balance press, and you can work your hollow back. I'm going to do both in the interest of time, so watch carefully. You'll grab the wheel, both hands, and then press the head into the wheel, tuck the toes, walk the feet in. I like to do more so the back of the head here. Head is still lifted, but it's pressing into the wheel. Now lean it, float those feet up, pinch a press. Now stagger one knee, 
Kick heel towards seat, other leg descends down. Pull the gaze through, foot comes to wheel for a hollow back variation here. So glorious. Deep breaths. And if you want to, you can start to pull the gaze through for more of a scorpion. And it will connect the circuit. Cyclical patterns of energy make it easier to redirect the energy into the space that needs it. Now practice your balance, see if you can switch. Other leg goes stag, while the leg goes finding the wheel. Once it's found, work the hollow back. Maybe pull the gaze through, the more of scorpion. And gently release. So that one's really fun. Last little, little Dharma nugget of knowledge there for you. Absolutely love it. All right, wheel off to the side. That's enough Dharma yoga wheel practice for now. Meet me back in the middle of the room. No doubt, you probably need to decompress the lower spine and counterbalance some of the deeper back bends that we just did. So right leg draws in, right leg comes up and over the left leg. Lean onto the left seat and slide the left heel back towards your outer right hip. Right hand behind the sacrum, left arm extends. Exhale, left elbow to the outer to the right knee. Firmly able as you twist, gaze over the right shoulder. Deep ujjayi breaths. Breathe into those inner vertebral discs. So this is kind of more of a workshop -y flow. Had to kind of break down some exercises. It is worth the concentrated effort though to establish your press. And again, to also balance as you go digging, as you unearth your press, the feminine aspect with the masculine. Gently release and counter twist to the left. And I think a lot of times people become overly reliant upon a heated environment to do their work in. And you'll notice that as your press gets solidified, back of the center, step the knees, heels towards outer hips, go across the legs, half go moves fine, simple cross leg is fine that you will achieve more heat than, than you probably want. No, I love it hot. Some, some of my yogis absolutely love it hot. They're getting upside down all the time. Right arm extends up, bend the elbow, reach the left hand up back with fingertips. Really, so much tapas is created, heat for purification when you incorporate inversions. Inhales, you find like excellent forward fold. And what's, what's frustrating is I see so many yogis taking the hop up into handstand. And what ends up happening, sometimes they might be able to precariously balance it, but they may not be conducting energy through the midsection. So it is a worthy endeavor to find, to build that strength, to really connect to your central core. Rolling the spine back up through the seated. Release, shake it out. Legs do a flare kick to switch. Left foot plants, left hand behind the sacrum, right arm extends, exhale, right elbow, outer edge of left knee for me as you twist. So again, if you're not engaging your midsection, your central core has a gap in it, and you're not able to conduct the kundalini energy all the way up to the sapphikumis. So you might have even had a kundalini activation, but it might be petering out on the lower most chakras. Really, really crucial. And if you want to be able to access your sapphikunas, throat chakra, brow chakra, without having to rely upon extensive hours of meditation or breath work or maybe psychedelics, and you just want to be able to get there in an instant, bandhas. I like to joke too, I would not have figured out how to, to look for work if it were not for community activation. It just feels so good, counter twist to the right. And it's really fun too, when third egg starts to activate and you get the psychedelics and the uh, sacred geometry, and I don't want to talk too much about what I see because everybody sees something different that's unique to them, back through the center, stack the knees, but it becomes a quintessential part of the practice, really absolutely the way that we're able to process the karmic debris, so we're not just moving it into a, a more convenient location where it can still cause the kundalini's deviations. Left arm extends up, bend the elbow, reach right hand up back through fingertips. Inhale as you find length and excellent forward fold it. 
Honestly, I used to joke back in college, I don't care about the six pack abs, give me the six pack of beer. <laughs> really the spine back up for you to see that I was actually more of a wino, it's more about the six pack of the two buck chuck, walk the hands back behind, straighten legs out in front, balance knees, much like the feet, slide the flesh, the bum out from underneath. Inhale, so scoop the hands out and up. And exhale, forward, fold it. Paschimottanasana. So these are all of my little tricks for establishing a press. Um, and I, I give them to you, offer them to you. I usually offer them to other yoga instructors so that they can show their yogis the way. But honestly, this, this quarantine has definitely shifted my priorities. I'm like, we got to get everybody on the Kundalini train. Rolling the spine back up through the seated, draw your knees in, soles feet come together, knees come wide, scoot hips towards heels, hands underneath feet. Press elbows into inner thighs. So yeah, there's many, many uses of Dharma Yoga Wheel too. Feel free to roll around on it. It's a great way to open up the thoracic spine to complement that feminine aspect again with the press work. And you can use it for single standing leg postures. You can use it for splits. Uh, and so if, if there's a call for even more uses of Dharma Wheel, I might do another Dharma Yoga Wheel featured video. Roll the spine back up through to seated. Draw your knees together and fold down onto your backs. Hug your knees into your chest. Give yourself a nice warm embrace, rocking gently from side to side. We're gonna have to save that Chakrasana for a future video, but get excited. That one really merits its own video, so I'm, I'm really excited to show you guys the Chakrasana, but for now, let's see if we can potentially come up into standing in the middle of the room. If you have a roommate, you can use a strap even. If you're nervous about touching, you can place the strap around the lower back and then gently pull them up into standing. But if you don't, then just try some rocks. You don't have to come up into standing today. Soles the feet to the mat, hips distance apart, press it up, lift it up, hands alongside the ears. Again, if you can pause on the crown of the head, then walk the hands in, press up, lift up the rest of the way up. So just taking some rocks. You really want to feel your feet grounding into the earth. And pull the hips forward. And the heart will leave. The head will follow. So ground down, root down. When you, when you feel so inclined, rise it up. And then on the way back down, hips come forward as a counterbalance. Same thing. Your partner can be holding onto the strap here and then slowly guiding you down. Hold on to that strap. Hold on to your person. Really, because sometimes people are brand new. They may not have their hands ready to receive the earth. Really crucial. We want to protect the noggin, okay? <laughs> so if you are doing some partner uh, assists, definitely make sure that you're vigilant or aware. Going back, both hands extend back at the same time so you're not scrunching in your lower back and again quads engage you can woodpecker the quads lower abdominals engage woodpecker the abs glutes engaged roll the hips forward engaging your core both hands reach back same time and connect to the floor yeah drop back so fun tucking the chin back of the head to the back Roll the spine down, windshield away for the knees. So of course, Chakrasana is the other way. <laughs> so again, super stoked. I'm gonna have to do a whole video on Chakrasana in the future. But for now, let's close it up. Hug the right knee in, extend your left leg out. Scoot the hips to the right, draw the right knee over to your left. Stacking the right hip on top of the left hip. Now roll the right shoulder down towards the ground. Let's switch things up a little bit. You can straighten through the right leg. Left hand catches the average of your right foot. Now bend the left knee, reach back with the right hand for your left foot. And gently twist. This is called archer's pose. It does kind of look like an archer pulling back the bow and arrow. And it really helps with the decompression of the lower back to really concentrate on pulling the right sit bone away from the floating ribs. 
air out that space. Gently release, left leg extends, hug right knee back in, Apanasana when you're moving. And then while we're here, half happy baby. This is honestly how I got so proficient at leg behind the head variations. Just every end of a practice, every single practice, they always offer up a twist and usually a happy baby. So I would just start doing Ekapadashar Shasana at the end of each twist and then happy baby, full Ekapadashar Shasana. So here's your half Ekapadashar Shasana, one leg behind the head. Gently release, hug the right knee in. And switch, hug left knee and extend right leg out. Scoot the hips to the left, draw the left knee to the right. Stacking left hip on top of right hip. Left leg can extend. Right hand catches the outer edge. Bending in the right knee, left hand reaches back. Catch your right foot with your left hand. Roll the left shoulder down towards the ground and extend the left seat away from the floating ribs. Couple more deeper jelly breaths. Amazing, beautiful work. Back through to center. We extend the right leg, hug the left knee back in. Half happy baby. Grabbing the outer edge of the left foot. Right hand can hold on to the sole of the foot. Thread the left arm through the window. Elbow into the nape of the knee, maybe leg behind the head. I know it's goofy, but your lower spine will love you for it, especially if you took Urva Dhanurasana. Glorious. Gently release. Now extend the legs straight up, wrap the elbows in, engage your core. Pressing down through the upper arms, chin lock, sweep the legs up and overhead for your shoulders stand. Breathe into the back of the neck. You can lower the feet down, collapse in the plow. Hands come behind the back, interlace. Press palms together, press chest towards chin. Maybe bend the knees around the ears, ear squeezed. Gently release. Slow roll the spine down. You can pause in your Urdhva Paschimottanasana. And release it the rest of the way down. Hands underneath your seat. Extend the legs forward, press down through the forearms, lift the chest up, crown head to the mat. Matsyasana, fish boats. And then finally, happy baby pose. Grab out arches of feet, rock gently from side to side, and maybe, look at how close this is in, in similarity. Woo! Some tone knuckle pops, wow. All right, one leg comes behind, followed by the other. We reach back, we maybe clasp fingers. And just like a happy little plan. We did our work today, hopefully expanded into some new space, reprogrammed the matrix for the benefit of all beings. When you're complete here, ready for your yogic sleep, your shavasana, final resting pose, the dead corpse pose, and gently exit yoga nidrasana. Legs extend out wide, feet flop open, palms face up, close the eyes. Take up lots of space and sweep those props aside. Take a nice deep inhalation in through the nose. Exhale, let go. <sighs> Resting here in complete stillness as long as you need to fully integrate, digest all of this new information. The body and the mind are inseparable as we clear points of weakness and create strength, points of tension and create openness. We eradicate limiting thought forms. Give yourself permission to die unto these illusions of separateness and lay them to rest. The highest light within me truly sees and honors the highest light within each and every one of you. I thank you for your practice on behalf of the macrocosm 
the collective consciousness, this shared reality that we're all experiencing together as one. Namaste.